Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Hamika Gem. Oh my god, you guys, Amers are like really angry at people in the luxury watch industry. They're a bit triggered, <laughs> so you know I had to cover it. I want to tell you guys about Amers today in the luxury watch industry. I want us to kind of just vibe about a few things. I want to get your opinion. Please make sure that you subscribe to my channel. I also have two things to tell you super quick. I found these really dope competitions. Check them out in the description below and let me know what you think. The first one is open for those of you in the UK. You can get a Lancome perfume of your choice um, for free. The second one is open for those of you in the United States. You can actually win an iPhone XS. Let me know if you're successful. I love competitions. I love voucher codes. I just got sent a voucher code, by the way, 10, like, no, two days ago from ASOS for my birthday in like two weeks. I was like, yes. Okay, <laughs> so excited. Try them out in the description below and let me know what you think. OMG. So basically, Amez, um, the the CEO of the watch unit at Amez is called Laurent Daudet, that's his name. And he did an interview with cppluxury.com, which is which is this like niche luxury website. It's for people who work in the luxury industry, but it's definitely skewed more towards Europe. And he went off, okay, in as far as um, French luxury executives go off because a lot of the times the francophone luxury executives they speak in code and it's very subtle but they really drive their point across so the first thing that he said was that he feels like a lot of the Swiss watchmakers have been making too many watches basically and um, even though Rolex and Audemars Piguet actually halted production of their watches during C19 they've, re they've resumed making them now he actually goes in on Swiss watchmakers. He's like, other watch producers um, are just making too many watches. And in his words, quote, it's an illness. That's what he said in the article. And that's what he's quoted as saying. I can imagine he was translating this from French. Maybe he was saying maladie or something like that. So I was like, uh, okay, well, why are you going off on them? Like they have to make watches. They need to sell things. And um, he was just basically saying that he thinks that the luxury watch industry even though it's doing okay, he doesn't like how basically Swiss watchmakers kind of over incentivize their sales managers to sell too many watches in order to hit these huge targets so they can earn a lot of commission and bonuses. So he talks about that in the article. I'll link it in the description below. I won't paraphrase what he said, but if you read it below, you'll see that's exactly basically what he said and what he meant. He was just like, sales managers are being given like huge targets so that they can make a lot of money off of these luxury watches therefore they're pushing too many luxury watches into the market and essentially having too many luxury watches um in the market kind of puts pressure on the watchmakers instead of putting pressure on consumers so that's what he was saying i thought that was so interesting because i'm like you know i have a sales manager in my company i, I mean if i came to her and i was like hey like we're going to slow down on your commission again. We're not going to pay you because we're trying to be very elite and all the rest of it. She just look at me and be like, girl, please. Okay, get out of here with that. So I just kind of think like a mess to me, at the very least, like how I read their behavior. I just find them very arrogant. I just think that it's so arrogant for you, particularly respectfully. Everyone knows that the Swiss watch houses are the top dogs of the luxury watch industry. I think it's pretty like like arrogant of you as a brand that isn't necessarily that coveted in the luxury watch world to start going around making demands and saying that people you know shouldn't get bonuses shouldn't get commissions because that's essentially what he's saying he's saying that that the sales managers are being paid too much money in commissions and bonuses and there's therefore like too much supply of watches in the market so i was just like uh okay dude i don't know about that the next thing that he talked about in the article, which was very juicy, he talked about how difficult the luxury um, watch industry basically is, basically in terms of brands. He said, if you're not in the top five, you are going to struggle um, to sell watches. And I'm gonna tell you which top five he was referring to. If you check out check it out on the article, you're gonna see it. He's referring to Omega, Patek Philippe, Cartier, <laughs> Rolex, and Audemars Piguet. So I was like, this is actually a big deal for an Hermes executive to actually agree that 
you're not that coveted in luxury watches. Sorry, you're not. And those top five, they're basically like the Jackson five and Rolex is like the Michael Jackson of watches here. If you're not in the group, you're not in the group and it is what it is. I thought that was just huge for someone from Hermes to actually say, do you know what? We're putting our hands up and saying, we are giving this thing uh, about watches a go. By the way, they've actually increased their sales for watches by 2% according to the article. So they're making money, okay? Hermes are doing fine, but they're not in that top five. I think it's just very interesting to me for them to actually say, do you know what? We're not in the top five. We're not going to be as coveted as Rolex, as Audemars Piguet, as Patek. And, you know, it's time for us to kind of accept that. I just think that they're pretty arrogant because they've gone from a, like a situation where in fashion, at least in terms of like bags and things like that, they're absolutely the top dog, the apex predator of luxury handbags. That is a fact. But you can't Birkinize watches, okay? You can't Kellyize watches. You know, I saw an old photo of uh, Princess Grace um, of Monaco, and like I think when she was pregnant with one of her children, and she actually is like holding the Kelly in front of her baby bum. I mean, it is just like it is. You can just see there's so much romance, like even behind, even though all of that is marketing, there's so much romance behind it. You know, like she was married to Prince Rainier, and they were really in love, and then she died tragically. Do you know what I mean? There's so much romance behind Hermes's like luxury handbag business. There's no romance to their watch business. No one's checking for an Hermes watch. And for those of you who like Hermes watches, don't get me wrong, I'm not attacking you. Um, as I said, the numbers speak for themselves. They actually are doing quite well. It's increased by 2%. Even with all the C19, you know, drama, they're actually making more money because they sell very expensive watches. But they're not as coveted, and that's the thing. So I think it's just very interesting to me that, you know, he's the CEO of the watch unit. That is not an easy job to have. Imagine you're the CEO of, like, Hermes Fashion, and or Hermes is, like... I think they call it saddlery in their annual report, like their leather goods and all the rest of it. That's like an easy job. The Birkins and the Kelly sell themselves. There is no Birkin of Hermes's watches. There is no Kelly. Okay, I don't even like the Constance, but let's put the Constance in there. There is no Constance. So they really need to sell, not based off marketing, not based off, you know, royals who passed on or an English actress. They actually have to sell based on, is the watch good enough, yes or no? And I think that for them, you know, for him to actually just say, hey, you know what, we're not in the top five. We're not in the top five and we need to accept that. I do think that's like a very interesting thing, basically, that they're admitting. In terms of right now, the luxury watch industry is very, um, you know, it's been rough for them because essentially what C19 has done is it has pushed a lot of watches onto the secondary market. Um, and from what I've been reading, and I also just lurked on the watches like subreddit is, you know, just to see what um, watch enthusiasts are saying. A lot of people have been selling their watches. Um, a lot of men specifically have been selling their watches during C19, like looking for those like deals in order to like sell their watches in order to make extra money or also trying to get vintage pieces. So this is this has not been the time basically to like release new things. At least it wasn't last year. Maybe now they're like releasing new things. I do, I hope I'm correct, but I believe that I think it was Audemars Piguet or something like that. I think that they have just like released a Royal Oak, a new Royal Oak watch with like Black Panther branding. I hope I'm not getting this wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll write something on the bottom here. Um, but I remember seeing that on CPP Luxury as well. So like now it's cool to like release new things, but definitely not like last year, it was a struggle for them. So I think essentially what he's saying is that the luxury watch industry is like repairing itself now, but having too many watches on the market is bad. And also if you're not part of the top five, yeah, it's not, it's going to be very difficult for you just because those five brands that he mentioned and that I also said, they have huge brand recognition. I mean, honestly, let's put Swatch to the side. Swatch is a huge name in watches because they make very affordable ones. Like, Omega is lit, okay? Just because something isn't a Rolex or a Patek or an Audemars Piguet does not mean anything. Omega is lit. So when he said Omega there, I was like, okay, this guy really knows what he's talking about. I'm very curious to know what you guys think, like, what do you think about the fact that Hermes isn't running things in the watch world and that they're also learning now to actually compete? You know, on the weekend, I was watching this documentary about lions and cheetahs. It was on National Geographic Wild. I like saw it on the TV. I told my husband, I was like, watch this. And he was like, okay, whatever. 
And then I watched it and I was so engrossed. I didn't even know what was going on with my phone. I didn't even pick up my phone once. And it basically showed that these lions basically were attacking cheetahs. They said how normally big cats never attack each other. And these lions were like going in on these cheetahs, these male lions. They killed a female cheetah. That was really sad to see her die, I have to say. And then they killed this other male cheetah. And the two other male cheetahs were like watching them like, yeah, what's up, what's up, what's up? You're going to do something about it? And I think that's the thing. That's the space that Hermes is in. In like luxury handbags, Hermes is the lion. It is the apex predator of luxury handbags. And an apex predator, simply put, is a predator that has no natural predators um, in, its base, in its group, basically. So a lion in the Serengeti, and this footage from that documentary is actually in the Serengeti in Tanzania, a lion doesn't have any natural predators. Okay, a leopard isn't gonna go kill like a hum like a fully grown lion. It can kill a baby lion, a cub, but not a fully grown one. And I think that's the situation that Hermes is in. Hermes are crushing the game when it comes to very expensive high-end luxury handbags. There is no other brand that makes a more coveted um, pair of bags than Hermes. The Birkin and the Kelly, they are the most coveted luxury handbags in the game at the moment. Um, but they're lions in handbags, but then when they go over <laughs> to luxury watches, they're like little hyenas in the background watching the lions and the cheetahs run around. And that's my point. So I'm just very curious to know like what you guys think of Hermes. I feel like they're just super arrogant. And I feel like when you're so successful, it's very easy to feel arrogant and to feel like you can do everything and you got everything. I personally am not a fan of their watches. It's just me personally. Um, I'm not interested in their watches. I really, really, really don't like Chanel's watches. Like, let me tell you, okay? I'm glad I'm talking about luxury watches now because I really don't like Chanel's watches. I'm shocked the J12 is as successful as it is. I really don't like that watch. I'm not attacking you, by the way, if you have this watch. It's just a personal preference. Um, when it comes to watches, my personal favorite is the Cartier Panther de Cartier. Um, that is on my grail list. I love the Rolex Day Date um, as well, but it's not a priority and it's not something that I'm looking to purchase at the moment. The Panther de Cartier watch is my priority. I also like a lot of Audemars Piguet watches as well. They're very, very nice. They're very iced out. They're very blingy, which is something that I like as well. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh yeah, and there's like an Hermes watch. I'm, Hermes watches are expensive. I'd rather put that money towards a Cartier watch that's actually on my grail list and that I know I'm going to wear every day and that I'm going to love. It kind of seems like I'm going in on Hermes. Don't get me wrong, okay? I still want a Birkin and I still want a Kelly, but I just think that it's kind of cool for them to kind of be humbled a little bit, okay? And they've been humbled. They thought they were going to, you know, launch their luxury watches and be the top dog and be the lions of the luxury watch industry. And Rolex and Audemars Piguet were like, ah! Let me stop you right there. So just really quickly before I finish the video, I want to show you guys a few watches that I actually really like. <laughs> Besides my grail piece, I really like um, watches from Gucci. I think Gucci have got some gorgeous watches that are super, super nice. I know that people say, oh, don't buy fashion watches or the rest of it. I'm not a watch snob, okay? I buy things that I think are aesthetically pleasing and that I really like as well. I also really like some watches from VCA, which is interesting because not a massive fan of the house, but I do have to say their watches are really, really nice. No surprise, their big sister Cartier is probably helping them create those watches. You know what time it is. I also really like watches from Chopin. This is a brand that I'm going to, I, I think this year and next year, I'm going to be like dedicating more time to learning about this house because I think this house is very interesting and I also really like their watches as well. And I'd also like to show you some watches from Boucheron, which is another one of my favorite um, jewelry houses. Fun fact, Boucheron was the first jewelry house to have um, a boutique at Place Vendôme in Paris. Isn't that a fun little like fact out there I'm just throwing for you guys? I also love their watches. I think they're very sleek. They're horrifically expensive, but absolutely gorgeous. I need to know what you guys think about this whole Hermes versus the luxury watch industry. 
Gemma's executive trying to check other watchmakers, okay, from Switzerland. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like my videos, please make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. I'm really enjoying making these videos. They're so fun. Um, my husband, uh, just one, one of my previous videos, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported it. That was like my most successful video ever. My husband was like, whoa, there's so many people commenting on your channel. This is lit. You know, I was like, yeah, and then he's like, oh, but are you asking them to, to subscribe in every video? I'm like, yeah, and he just laughs so hard because he thinks it's so pathetic. Ow. <laughs> always begging people to subscribe no but seriously please subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching you guys and i'll see you in my next video